when I went back down to Pascagoula after Hurricane Katrina, I had lived in Nashville for a long time, and my family had not lived in Pascagoula for many years. But I went down to, uh, to Pascagoula, and I don't think a lot of people realized how devastated the coastline from Louisiana east all the way into Alabama was. The Mississippi coast was devastated. And so I saw where uh, the, how the little two-story, it was a moderate home, but it was a two-story house that I grew up in, and there was nothing but a concrete slab with a little white trailer sitting on it after Katrina. And that was just the scene up and down the whole Gulf Coast. And it really struck me, and I got to talking to some friends of mine who still live about a half a block back from where I grew up, and they're still there, and they have rebuilt their house, and uh, I'm happy to say that the Gulf Coast and New Orleans, uh, they both have been very resilient, and I'm very proud of the people I grew up with down there. But anyway, this, uh, this song sort of came out of seeing that concrete slab where my house used to be, and their story, my friend Paul and Julie Leonard and their daughter Hope, the song is called Hope and Love. trailer sitting where I used to live. The old hometown sure doesn't look the same. Unlike the worn out sermon some old hard shell preacher gives. Hell came in with water not with flames. I've lived in Pascagoula every minute of my life. Comes to storms I never fool around. I heard about this big one got my daughter and my wife. A place we used to think was higher ground. I told my wife Julie we would never give up hope. She said hope and love are life itself. When the wind stopped blowing and the water settled down, hope and love were all that we had left. There was six feet of water way up in my mama's house where my wife and daughter hope and I had gone. And we learned too quickly that fine furniture can float And you can still tread water saying prayers I told my wife Julie we would never give up hope She said hope and love are life itself When the wind stopped blowing and the water settled down Hope and love were all that we had left Since that awful time, we thank the Lord for what we have, and don't worry about whatever we may lack. We still have each other, and everybody down here knows that it's up to God and us to bring our old town back. I told my wife, Julie, we would never give up hope. She said hope and love are life itself. When the wind stopped blowing and the water settled down, hope and love were all that we have left. Hope and love are all that we have left. Thank you. I am very happy to say that uh, the Gulf Coast and New Orleans really have come back strong after Katrina. Certain parts of it will never be the same, but that's the way it is in hurricane country. You just have to learn to live with it. Speaking of New Orleans, I uh, have had the great opportunity to perform there over the years at, uh, at a weekly poetry reading. And this all evolved because a friend of mine was a poet, a great poet, named Everett Maddox. And in the 1980s, he would invite me to come over when I still lived down there and come down after I moved to Tennessee to perform my original songs. And for me, as a songwriter, I never really thought of myself as a poet, but he saw something in these lyrics that I did not. So anyway, it meant a lot to me to be able to go sing my songs in the midst of these great New Orleans po uh, poets who were doing their poems, uh, spoken word poems. So the, his name was Everett Maddox. Everett was um, interesting in many ways. He was a genius. His first published poem appeared in the New Yorker magazine. That's where he started. You know, so he was considered to be the poet's poet, and uh, he became a professor in the Northeast and ended up, he was from South Alabama, but he ended up in New Orleans for many years. Uh, 
while he was there, after working at a couple of colleges, teaching literature and English and so forth, uh, he began to decline. Uh, but how, no matter what his personal state might have been, uh, and he went through a divorce and became homeless before that was even a word, but no matter what he was going through, he would always host this weekly poetry reading at the Maple Leaf Bar. And even when the poetry readings were not going on, he was sort of a fixture there. And it didn't matter how loud it got in the bar, he would hold court. People would gather around him and watch him recite uh, literature works, poems. Uh, he could quote Mark Twain verbatim and William Shakespeare and all of these incredible uh, literary icons. People would gather around as the music was played in the room next door to listen to him uh, re recite. And it seemed like the more he drank, the more accurate his quotes became. And he also developed a great skill of drinking all night and never paying for a single one of them himself. So he was an inspiration to me in a lot of ways. So I wrote this song about it. This is called Inspiration in Bar Scotch. He could read for umpteen hours, summoning his powers to conjure up the syllables that kept us all in for Thank you so much. 
I wanted to play a song that every used to like to have me play, and this sort of show to be. And it shows the, the, the versatility of a lot of different people who are uh, basically serious writers, but they have a, 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 a wicked sense of humor. But of all the songs that I had written before ever died, this was one of his favorites. And it came from watching also. Uh, the song was written in the uh, late 1980s. Who remembers the phenomenon, the fashion phenomenon called the tube top? Well, I was struck by a songwriter in Nashville one time who was wearing one when she performed, and and she wore it very well. And um, anyway, she got off stage and said, "I don't know why nobody pays any attention to the lyrics of the songs." And I'm sorry. I said, "We're we're distracted. Sorry about that." So I took that little incident and kind of took it from one end of the Mississippi to the other and back again. This is a little piece of poetry called "The Midriff Mama Blues." The old riffs and the new riffs, the jazz riffs and the blue riffs. Oh, how she makes that guitar talk. She plays the fast riffs and the slow riffs, the high riffs and the low riffs. But I like her mid riff most of all. Well, I'm sitting here a gawking while her guitar does her talking. She plays down low and then plays high above. That outfit she is wearing, her navel she is wearing, and I feel like I'm about to be in love. From Bourbon Street to Rio. Well, she plays just how she feels. And you think you might be. Upper East Mississippi, it's near Meridian, Starkville, Columbus, that part of the state. And when I was a little boy, uh, I would go visit my grandmother in Louisville. Now, I had, there are seven first cousins on that side of the family. We're all still alive. We all still keep in touch. And our favorite thing there at my grandmother's house was an old wooden tobacco box that she had found. Now, I know that my grandmother did not chew tobacco, so I can't blame that on her, but she had an old wooden tobacco box. In it, she kept uh, thread spools with no thread on them anymore, keys that didn't fit any locks, watches that didn't run, buttons that were broken, two buttons that didn't match each other. I mean, it was just a hodgepodge of whatever she could throw in there. And it, it was so much fun. When we got there as kids, she would just turn that box upside down and we'd go nuts and just play with it as if they were the most expensive toys you could have bought. Um, so anyway, I wrote this song about it. And perhaps there are two questions I'd like to Does anybody here remember a button box? I'm just curious, or something like it. Yeah. And is anybody here, does anybody here have a Meemaw in their family? 
That's what we called my grandmother. So uh, anyway, this is a song called The Button Box. The old box held tobacco in the general store. Old men bought it plug by plug till the old box held no more. Somehow my grandma got that box and put it to good use. She filled it up with buggies that were laying around loose. and I still have it. And the, it, was a, it was a pretty big box, you know, considering it held plugs of chewing tobacco. And the, the, to tell you how old it was, it's an old wooden box. The name of the, the, the tobacco is Bloodhound Chewing Tobacco. And the, the paper uh, tax stamp is still on it for the whole box. The tax stamp on the entire box of tobacco was 15 cents. Yeah, so this it prob that box probably came from the 1940s or before. Uh, you know, never know. My aunt Dot that I mentioned, she was a colorful character too. That's when you grow up in the South, as you all well know, you you meet colorful people, and I'm fortunate enough to be able to put some of those memories in song. But my aunt Dot, um, she she had a, she had some favorite expressions, like if she wanted to share a coke with somebody, she'd say, "You want a piece of a coke?" <laughs> you know. And she had funny things that would happen to her. She was uh, shopping uh, one time with my mother and my aunt and several other people. And so they went in this department store and so there was a whole table full of purses. And uh, she found the perfect purse. I mean, she not said, this is the perfect purse for me. So she took it to the counter and my mother and my aunt started laughing. And she said, what? This is the perfect purse, don't you think? And they said, not you walked in here with that purse. That's the one that she had brought. So, you, you, so you, you meet colorful people growing up down here. But then I went to Michigan for a while, but I'm going to tell you something else. I, I was only there for seven weeks. Uh, I had the great opportunity years ago to perform at Mackinac Island, Michigan. Have you all been there? Yeah. It's a beautiful place, isn't it? Yes. And uh, the thing is, though, I was there in August for for a month performing at a resort and then back in, uh, in October, three weeks. Well, in October, it snowed every every week. It was too cold up there for me. And what I learned was that they, they cook for the lowest common denominator. There are, there's no flavor in the food. I was there for seven weeks. I grew up on the Gulf Coast with a lot of good seafood and so forth, and I've lived in Tennessee for many years with great barbecue and other things. That I just love Southern cooking. Well, in Mackinac Island, Michigan, they, took, they cook for all these tourists, and they don't want to offend anybody, so there's not any flavor in any of the food. So my advice to you is if you go there, it's a beautiful place, all right. 
but bring your own lean and your own Tabasco sauce, your own cayenne pepper. Anyway, when I was there, I got hungry and homesick and I wrote this song. Well, I'm north of Sheboygan, south of the Sioux. I'm up in Mackinac, Michigan, missing you. I'm way up north, but I'm down in the mouth, watching Canadian geese migrating south. The smartest bird I ever saw was that goose flying south from Mackinac. He don't need no suitcase bag to tote, no horse-drawn carriage or a ferry boat. He just flaps his wings and hits the sky. I'd be right with him if I Just ain't my style. Try to mac an all style barbecue. Honey, get me down to that rendezvous. They got buffalo burgers way up here. They don't hold a candle to Mama Roll Tears. The St. Bernard's in Mackinac need their barrels filled with Tabasco sauce. And at breakfast, it's no thank you, ma'am. Don't be Canadian bacon to a country ham. I got the Mackinac blues. towards Tennessee. Memphis, Nashville, both will do as long as I'm down there with you. I got the Mackinac Blues. I got the Mackinac Blues. Cause I wanna be in Tennessee with you. I got the Mackinac Blues. side of my two-sided 45 RPM records. It was a great deal. You know, 45s were the little record with the big hole as opposed to the big record with the little hole, the 33s. And see, you got two songs on the same record. It was crazy. It's like people that grew up with CDs don't know how that works, and now nobody knows what the B-side of a record is. Anyway, the song I played earlier, Seductive Eyes, was going to be the A-side of the record. But I was inspired to write a song about this place in New Orleans that I love to eat called the Community Grill. So I took them a tape of the song and I said, I'm about to make a record of this. Would you all mind selling it? They said, we'll sell it at the checkout counter if you'll make Community Grill the A side of the song. Welcome to the music business, ladies and gentlemen. So this was it, this is the, uh, the song, and it was really only inspired because I just had a great time the first time I was ever there. What I like to do is park my car in a high-rise garage down in the French Quarter, get on that St. Charles Avenue streetcar ride all the way out St. Charles Avenue, past Lee Circle, past the Audubon Zoo, past Tulane University, till St. Charles makes that U-turn and becomes Carrollton Avenue, Get off at the first streetcar stop, go to the Comedia Grill, and order two eggs over easy with sausage and french fries on the side. There's a little cafe down on Carrollton Street. It's my favorite place to eat. You sit down, order, and eat your fill. There ain't no place better than Comedia Grill. I love Comedia Grill. Chad Catway is a Comedia Grill. Potatoes, you sit down on order and eat your fill. There ain't no place better than community grill. They got a child of cat waiter, he never stands still. He's moving all around the grill. There's no coffee better than his. You don't order it black, 
to say I'll have it as he is. I know a Camellia Grill. Jack and Waiters, the Camellia Grill. French fried potatoes. You sit down on and eat your fill. There ain't no place better than Camellia Grill. chance seeing that in another establishment that serves food, but I hope people aren't just going to get up and drive to New Orleans right now. <laughs> uh, but anyway, thank y'all for having me. I've got, I've got more. I believe it. Thank you. Am I, am I, yeah, I'm on. I'm on. Hi, folks. We, we're rounding out our, our two hours lesson. We've probably got time for another song. All right. I'll be glad to do this one. Thank you Absolutely. all for some, being such a wonderful audience. Please give yourselves a hand. The fine wait staff and the kitchen staff, and of course the fine proprietors right over here. So yes, aren't they wonderful? Um, and thank you all very much for your kind reception. I'm going to do this last song about New Orleans since Mardi Gras is coming up, and uh, it's one that I close my shows with. Uh, New Orleans, as you know, is is literally below sea level, and I always thought that that was an interesting thing. It's probably what makes the people so unusual down there and why I love them so much. So they inspired this song. This is called Below the Level of the Sea. The Maple Leaf Bar is down on Oak Street. That always seemed ironic to me. Cause there ain't no Oak Leaf Bar over on Maple. But I guess that's just the way it's meant to be. This is a crazy mixed up town. The dead are buried above the ground. And a funeral is a party, yes sir. You may have lost a life on pal, but soon you're strutting down the canal. And you know we do it all below the level of the sea. Tennessee Williams used to live here. He rode that streetcar named Desire to irony. Cause there ain't no Louisiana Williams living up in Memphis. But I guess that's just the way it's meant to be. This really is a writer's town. You live your life and you write it down. Your story's sticky like the humidity. You're just living what you think and it all comes out in the And you know we do it all below the level of the sea. Dramas do unfold. Those crawfish eating lawyers use Napoleonic code. Well, bred New Orleans debutantes can stand you on your ear. Just like those little Cajun girls raised on Dixie Bear. Carrollton Station ain't no roundhouse. But there's lonesome streetcars here to get some juice. And just like a streetcar, I have found out that I'm rolling with the flow and running loose. Oh, I may never settle down, but she's my lady, she's my town. Her rhythm and her blues are part of me. And when the saints go marching in, you'll see this lonesome boy again. And I know we'll do it all below the level of the sea. Back down in New Orleans, cause those saints go marching in. 
and blow the level of the sea. Thank y'all again very much. I really appreciate it.